I'm Shevel and welcome back to my VOD channel. Today we are finally finishing Coffee Talk 2. What actually happened is I lost the VOD. I didn't save it in time, but I couldn't leave it without finishing it. So I'm gonna play through the last three days now. And don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so we're picking up, uh, I believe, three days before the wedding. September 30th. Neko Mimi driver crashes truck filled with catnip, suspected DUI. UFO previously spotted by Space Guard fighters, a very determined hot air balloon. ZXX20 virus vaccine booster ready for distribution. Let's check the drawer. What am I supposed to do with these? Who is this for? Who am I supposed to give that to? I think we're leaving this one here, and then I think I need to give this to Gala or Hyde, whoever shows up first, I think. Hello, Miss Aqua. Hi, Shelby. How are you? Good as usual. How about you? Um, honestly, lots of things have happened. Can I order something first, though? Of course. What would you like? Um, can you make me a cup of chai? I don't remember how to make literally anything. Um, tea, ginger, cinnamon. Tea, ginger, cinnamon? A masala chai? That's chai, right? Looks good. I don't think I need to give her anything. A cup of masala chai for the lady with the ele eclectic tastes. Thank you, it's delicious. You're welcome. So you were saying? Oh, right. It's just I've been working on my game. Ah, I see. How's it going? It's pretty difficult, but I'll manage. I'm glad to hear that. How's that contract you talked about the other day going? Oh, that. I rejected it, of course. There's no saving it, really, which is a shame. I truly like their games, but with all the shady requirements they had, I could tell they looked down on us small developers. And the scary thing is, if if I hadn't known what I know now, just because they were a publisher I loved a lot, I would have overlooked all of that. That's understandable, though. You trusted them not to take advantage of you. Well, it has to be fair for both of us, right? Because at the end of the day, it's business. But I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I tried negotiating with them because I wondered if they still had any good faith left. Don't tell Myrtle, okay? Okay. But as I expected, it really didn't go anywhere. Instead, they insisted they're doing me a favor since I'm just a small developer, and I wasn't thinking rationally or in business terms. Not thinking rationally is rude. Oof. Doesn't sound like good faith to me. Right? Considering the unfair conditions they're expecting me to accept, they could have at least been polite about it. I doubt they care, though. Yeah. That aside, Myrtle is coming here soon. Great. So you two made up already? Yes. We apologize to each other. Nice. I know I was probably being a little confusing. I didn't explain the context I applied to the situation very well, but she made it clear that she understood why I was anxious, and she apologized for assuming. That really helped. Now she's helping me speed up development. I'm happy to hear that. Myrtle? Myrtle! Hey. Hi, Myrtle. We were just talking about you. Okay. Nothing too, okay. <laughs> Nothing too terrible, I hope. Don't worry, only all the good stuff. Anyway, sorry, Shelby. I won't be ordering today. Why? We don't have time. We're going to the expo sale, right? I just handed her a drink to her. So if you don't have time. She paid already, right? Do I ever charge people? I have never noticed. Oh, you're right. Expo sale? We're hunting new parts for my PC. It's been a bit slow lately. <laughs> a bit. She's joking. It's pretty much in its death throes. If we're going, we're building you a whole new setup. But if you just want parts, I can always give you mine. But at this point, I'm not sure any will be a help at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, you're right. It's time to move forward with the productivity. I've been putting off upgrading things for a while now. So it really is time for a better setup. That's the spirit. Go big or go home. Sorry, Shelby. Seems like we have to go now. Thanks for the drink. I'll see you later. Yeah, take care. Safe trip and good luck. 
Oh, the squish. Hello? Did I hear the chair move by itself? Let's see. I guess I'll go over today's checklist. Hmm? Oh! Oh! Well, hello, gentlemen. Hey, Shelby. Shelby! Nice seeing you here, Hendry. How goes it? Good, good, good. I see you're doing good, too. As usual. What do you want to drink, Hendry? It's on me. No, no, no. That won't do. Well, let's talk about bills later. So what will it be? You first. You sure? Okie dokie. I'll have one STMJ, please. Let me just refer to my phone really quick. What does that even mean? Oh, oh. Milk, ginger, honey. Milk, ginger, honey. Okay. Easy. I don't remember any of the ones that aren't in my little book. And we don't need to give him anything. One STMJ coming up. Ah, it smells so nice. Spot on. Thanks, Shelby. You're very welcome. How about you, sir? Oh, it's my turn. Something with ginger, please. Anything else with that? Well, what would you recommend? Anything from your new tea line is fine. Oh, I see you have a new selection. Yes, we have blue pea and hibiscus tea available. Hibiscus, huh? You should try... Te... I don't want to say it wrong. Rosella. It's pretty good for this kind of weather. Sounds familiar. It's ginger steeped with Roselle buds, un another name for hibiscus. Anything else in it? Well, it's a bit sweet. Interesting. I'll try it then. Okay, so... Hibiscus, ginger, and then they want it sweet, so honey, I guess. I hope that'll, I hope that'll be sufficient. And then I do think that I need to give him this, because I think this is for him and Hyde. I'll try it. I don't know what'll happen. Hmm, what's this? Oh, it's Bailey's and Lua's wedding invitation. Really? For Hyde. Oh. The day is really soon. Could you pass it along to him since I'm not sure when he'll be here? Hmm. Okay, sure. Thank you. A piping cup of Rosella for you. Thanks. What do you think, Hendry? Does it look any good? Uh-oh. It looks about right. It smells good, too. Try it. Yep, it's good. Glad I passed your impromptu test. So what's been going on? Did I miss anything? Um, something happened, didn't it? You could say that. I think the officer is coming too, by the way. All right. As for me, I'm just glad my fury is over. Are you okay, though? I'm fine, as you can see. How are you managing, Hendry? Did you get your checkup? I did, I did. Rachel pestered me to get it done all week, so I had to do it. Good. There's no doubt I need to slow down. I can feel it in my bones. Time is a harsh mistress, as they say. Ain't that the truth? But I don't think you get to complain, though. Why not? You know, my body isn't what it used to be anymore. Oh? I mean, compared to my prime? 50 years ago? I'm kidding. Truth is, my body doesn't hold up well when I'm transforming anymore. Oh, is that so? Yep. The soreness doesn't go away as quick as it used to. It's harder to get up in the morning after all that. Like today. I know the feeling all too well, especially in this kind of weather. Oh? It's like my body knows if a storm's gonna get worse. No weather forecast can match the accuracy of my joints. Well, lucky for you, Ginger is great for sore muscles. Yeah. Why are we always allowing this man to smoke indoors? That's the only question I have. Hey, folks. The man of the hour. Hiya, Georgie. Shelby, what I miss? Some very important weather talk. Is that so? Sounds like I missed a ton, then. How are you? How am I? If you're talking about my case, well, I don't even know where to begin. Hendry, you know nothing about what I'm about to say, right? No, what are we talking about? Shelby, you should have primed him before I got here. My bad. In my defense, I didn't know you were coming till Mr. Gala mentioned it. Excuses, excuses. I'll help explain it to Hendry. In short, there's been a string of car vandalisms nearby. We get the recap. I would have liked the refresher, actually. 
So he's trying to figure out if the tree being gone has anything to do with the case. And that's where we are now. Yep, that's about it. That's a lot to take in. Anything new happened since? He takes a drag. Well, I tried something. I set a few candles where the tree was. I used my lighter and things happened. M mind backing up a bit? Feels like there's a lot of context missing here. Well, I'm warning you. Everything I'm about to tell you is real. It'll sound a little crazy, but no, I haven't lost it yet. Got it? Loud and clear. I told Shelby about my lighter a while ago, how it might be connected to the fairy market we talked about before. Really, in what way? Stop smoking. <laughs> the lighter was my grandpop's, and there's a chance he bought it from there. Ah, interesting. Yeah, what a coincidence. Anyways, my daughter likes this sort of mystery stuff, right? After talking to her about what's been going on, she believed my lighter was the key to making sense of all of this and gave me some pointers. So, I went back there last night, to the spot, you know, to where the tree used to be. I lit a few candles there and put the lighter right in the middle of it all. I'll be honest, it was spooky as heck. The air was still and I felt tension in my head. Wasn't sure if it was just me being creeped out or if there was something else going on. Whatever it was, I thought I should leave it alone. So I followed my gut and got the heck out of there. Then what happened? It blew up. What? What do you mean, what? The lighter. It just blew up. Well, what do you mean, blew up? Yeah, I think we definitely need more context here. Well, I didn't see it because I was walking towards my car, you see. But I heard it. With a little whoosh, followed by a couple of clink clinks. Pathaw. I didn't say the sound because I didn't think they'd make me have to do it again. What kind of sound is that? You know, like something small and metallic blew up. Wouldn't bang work better? No, that's a shock. Wouldn't wa- Wouldn't want to confuse y'all with that. But pathaw is- What is that? You know, pathaw! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then what happened? Right, okay. Then I immediately looked back to see it, and it had fallen over with its lid open. The flame, it was burning white. Wow. Ain't gonna lie to y'all, I freaked the frick out. But before I could do anything, two small figures emerged from the corner walking toward the lighter. Did they see you? Yeah, they did. They inspected my lighter while I was just standing there. Then they asked me straight up, is this lighter yours, guy? I said, yeah. Then I fired a question back. Are you the ones who have been messing with the cars around here lately? And they said, yes. Well, sounds like case closed. So they weren't ghosts? Hell no, thank God for that. Then who are they? Let's just say they were close friends of the deceased. They're part of the fairy folk, but I didn't expect them at all. Didn't expect? Do you know them? Kinda. In fact, they own the Gnome Noms near my place. Oh, wow! Did they know it was your car then? Nope, because I only order takeout. And I usually walk there. What was the reason for all the vandalism then? Oh. It all started because of a broken promise. And we have to start way back for that. You remember why the tree was there in the first place, right? Yeah. The tragic hit and run. At the time, the court ruling practically let the driver off the hook outside the DUI charge. Well, it sparked a huge protest. Good! In response to it, the mayor at the time gave his word to the victim's family. He promised to keep the tree as a landmark for the community, and the vow was kept well after his tenure was over. But he died a few years ago, and we all know recently what happened to the tree. I see. So it was their attempt to keep the memory alive. Not just for their friend, but as remembrance of the injustice as well. And after all the urban renewals the city's gone through, makes sense that the community that used to be there is gone by now. That's right. There used to be a lot of veteran housing and low-rise apartments in the area. Now it's filled with never-ending projects. You okay? Oh, yeah, sorry. There's something about it that bothers me a bit. Like what? Their unique disposition after they pass. 
It bothers me that their own memories are insufficient to ensure their existence. And by failing to remember, we, the outside party, will also gradually lose track of their existence. It just doesn't feel right to me. I get what you mean. An odd erasure of existence. But apparently that's why they keep animals. The Nom Nom's owner told me they have a large mastiff living in their place. Others even take care of multiple animals at once. Interesting. I suppose that's why some folk prefer living near the wilderness. But animals don't live long either. Right. But the erasure starts happening if they're completely forgotten, right? Something like that, I guess. I'm not sure. Right, okay. But doesn't that normally happen anyway? How do we pay respects and remember someone who died a long time ago? Like our ancestors, for example. It's our call, isn't it? Hmm. Every April, Rachel and I would visit my wife's grave. We used to visit her grandparents' graves, too, when my wife was still alive. If our extended family was visiting, they'd join us. We'd clean their gravestones, bring food, and have a feast while catching up. It's how Nekomimis honor the dead, and I'm sure other cultures have their own ways, too. Right. I truly think continuing the tradition is something we do for ourselves, though. To remember the deceased and all the reasons they mattered to us. So, except for the weird erased memory part, it sounds on par to me. It's the effect... It's the effort of the living to remember the dead anyway. You're right. Unless you believe in life after death, memories are for us, not for the dead. Exactly. It would be great if we could all remember and help each other, because keeping track of any sort of history is a team effort since the best way to gain wisdom is to learn from the past, whether it's bad or good. Yeah. Speaking of the Nom Nom owners, though, what happened to them after all that? Oh right, did you arrest them? No. Huh? Are you gonna let them go? Not necessarily. But I got an idea on what I have to do. Right now I'm just happy there's no ghosts involved. Still, it was truly something else. Yeah, what a night it must have been. It is what it is. What's up, big guy? Something on your mind? No, nothing. A shame about that lighter of yours, though. Oh yeah, it's probably busted, right? That's the thing. It works just fine. Not even a scratch. Really? But that thing blew up, didn't it? Like, pata! <laughs> Heck, we even debated the sound effects and everything. As I said, it still works fine. So I don't know what else to tell you. I see. You want to know what I think? No, it's haunted. No, it's not. That thing is definitely haunted. What are you talking about? The white flame is a bit unnatural, I agree. And I remember how you kept forgetting your lighter here. Hey now, a man is allowed to forget stuff as he gets older, no? As for the blowing up, it was probably a well-timed bad chemical reaction or something. That thing is really old after all. If that was the case, you might want to stop carrying it around. At any rate, I believe you now, officer. There's no such thing as coincidence, indeed. I still think it's a ghost, though. <laughs> Shut it, Hendry. Shush. In any case, mystery solved. For now, at least. Hmm. Oh, no, I think I have to go now. I didn't realize I missed multiple messages earlier because I was so engrossed in your story. Sorry to rush off. I'll see you all again next time. Sure, safe trip. Nice seeing you again, Hendry. Take care. Let me move over there. You know, all that talking made me thirsty. You want anything? I'm good. Oh yeah, he didn't get a drink yet. Then one espresso for me, please. I think that's just all coffee. I'm pretty sure I remember that one. No one wants me to make art for them. That's not fair. Wait, was I supposed to give him... Was I supposed to give him? No, right? We're good? Uh, we're good. I think we're good. Great as always. So what's next, officer? What's your plan after this? Other than talking to him? I guess I'll focus on the rumors. Word is going around that cars are being messed up there. That's kind of expected, though. There's no point in adding to the citizens' worries when the case is pretty much over. And I don't want bad press p to paint over the area's history. You're right. There's nothing like rumors. Without being stopped, they'll just spiral out of control. Time to leave, I guess. Duty calls? Something like that. I suppose I'll do the same. It's quite late, after all. 
Thanks for listening to us, Shelby. The old men ramble. The pleasure is all mine. Well, take care and see you later. Have a good night, Shelby. Safe trip, you two. Good day. Vegan food on the rise, gnome diet popular amongst young adults, box office movie high weapon, hits astonishing 2 billion worldwide. What Generation Z really wants? An independent survey. Shelby, Shelby! M Miss Rachel? Oops! Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm just really excited. I've done it, Shelby. Congratulations. Done what? The music I'm making with AJ. I told you about it last time, remember? Oh yeah, you did. I brought it with me. Check it out, will you? Really? Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Are you sure we can play it? What about NDAs and stuff? Come on, you silly. We're the only ones in here anyway. It'll be fine. I mean, the direction has already changed a lot, so... Oh? Never mind that. Let's just play it, quick. This is good, um, coffee shop music. Is that an insult? I'm sorry. What do you think? I was inspired by the drink you gave me. Sweetheart Latte, wasn't it? That's right. You composed the melodies? With a Remy? Yeah. Who? <laughs> so, like, I know with the name Sweetheart Latte, you'd expect something a little more fun sounding, right? But hearing how you made the drink reminded me of something. Like a new love's beginning or thinking about your crush. The sourness of anxiety and the sweetness of promise. There are a lot of steps to keep... There are a lot of steps to keep the delicate balance going until you get to the point where you decide to confess. I think I see where you're going with this. Yeah, just like the drink, right? It needs the perfect balance of ingredients and temperature to mix properly, doesn't it? Or it would curdle, yeah. That's a really interesting take on the name. There's just one thing I'm wondering about. What is it? If this is supposed to be your new single, wouldn't everyone expect to hear your voice? I know, but I'm planning something. You'll see. How are you, by the way, Shelby? Just fine. Business as usual. Wait, I almost forgot. Did Dad come here last night? Hendry? Yes, he did. He was meeting up with Mr. Gala, actually. Okay, that's good to know. Why do you ask? He didn't reply to my text last night, so I wondered what he was doing. Ah, I see. Do you two not see each other often? What do you mean? I just saw him this morning. We still live under the same roof, after all. Oh, what a surprise. I thought you'd have been raring to move out by the time you turned 21. Well, you're not wrong in thinking that, but Dad's getting older, you know? He's becoming forgetful, too, so I'm a little bit worried. Understandable. Besides, we don't really have anyone else, you know? None of our extended family even lives in the States, so as much as he's been a nag my whole life... I feel like I should watch over him, for now. Right. Hello, welcome! Hello? Oh, hello! Good evening to you, Miss Riona. Hey, Riona. Fancy meeting you here. Uh... Hello. How are you? Sorry, just a second. Alright. Weird. Suspicious. Huh? Is she alright? I'm not sure. Hmm. Oh well, I'll just get a drink first. Right, what would you like? I'll have a cup of milk, please. Oh, thank God. Keep it easy, because I don't even remember how to do this. Milk, milk, milk. My worst nightmare. Can I do art in it? Oh, no. <laughs> I hope I don't have items to give anyone. I don't remember. Here you go, a cup of warm milk. Thank you. Hmm. What's up? Oh, nothing. Just remembered something. But it's nothing special, so don't worry about it. I hope it wasn't something in my drawer that I was supposed to give her. Miss, are you alright? No. I think I'm sad. She's crying! What's wrong? That's right, Riona, what's wrong? I've been doing a lot of thinking. About what? About my situation. 
Have you ever felt like something you've been doing your whole life might be a mistake? What makes you think that, miss? My apologies. I, I did not mean to be so dramatic. Would you two mind listening to my scattered thoughts? Of course, let it all out. Miss Rachel is right, feel free. After listening to the experiences you and Mr. Lucas had, along with my conversations with Shelby and the regulars of this coffee shop, I have gradually realized over the past week that... that I'm severely lacking in awareness about many things. Huh? And what makes it more troubling is... It is likely that my ignorance was on purpose? Ignorance? On purpose? What do you mean? Girl, let it out. <laughs> it's okay. Miss Rachel, the position you hold today is a result of your efforts and tenacity. You honed your talent, but you did not shirk from taking risks in order to succeed. Your knowledge of the industry has enabled you to successfully navigate it. And I greatly respect your ability to do so. Mr. Lucas also, although I do not fully understand his content, he is successful enough that people earn a living through his work. I am aware that that must require a great deal of courage and flexibility. To put it simply, I feel ashamed of myself because I may have become too comfortable with the status quo to the point that I no longer strive to improve my situation. Are you really though? I mean, you've been trying your best, right? I've been trying, yes, but I have been, but have I been trying my best? That's debatable. And about my intentional ignorance, I'm simply afraid. Afraid? I understand I only have a small chance of being selected for a role in a play. I really do. I understand it's due to my lack of network and the industry's expectations, along with my lack of higher education, and for the simple fact of what I am. I'm truly fine with all of that. I really am. Because, because all of it is a pain I'm already familiar with. And perhaps somewhere in the deepest depths of my heart, I'm having to face unfamiliar rejections again, having to get used to a new pain all over again. Just might be. Don't cry. I want to hug her. <laughs> Might be difficult. Miss. I apologize for all this ruckus. I didn't mean to. Miss Riona, would you please allow me to make you a drink? It's on the house. Um, but Shelby insists, right? Right. Don't order anything complicated. <laughs> what was the pie you ate the other day? Um, the blueberry hibiscus mint pie? Did you like it? I did. Quite a lot, actually. Then I'll make something special just for you. Could you tell me its flavor profile? Um, give me a moment. The blueberry was very sweet and fresh. The crust was buttery. The flavor was enhanced by the tartness of the hibiscus and the herbal coolness of mint. Just a very sweet blueberry pie with hibiscus and mint. I could figure this out. So we're going to add hibiscus. Do we not have mint? And then what's this? Green tea. We need sweet. And then the secondary ingredients. Do we start with hibiscus? Which one's the sweetest one? We're not doing cocoa powder. I think we start with hibiscus and then add mint and then something to make it sweeter. Really sweet. Dear God, I hope that's right. <laughs> and can I put art in it, please? I also wanna just check. Okay, good, this was empty. Just to be sure, I am not allowed. They don't want my art. <laughs> they don't appreciate it. A cup of warm drink for you, miss. Oh, I think I did it wrong. Was I supposed to do the blue one as the base? No, thank you. I think I did that wrong. <laughs> I swear I did it right the first time I played this. What's on your mind? Right now I'm rethinking my true motivation for doing all of this. The driving force behind everything I've done up to this point. Well, what was it? Huh? your driving force before you started questioning it. I wish to break free from the shackles of prejudice, whether it's society's or my own. 
Not only for myself, but also for my kind. I see. So it doesn't have to be opera, right? Pardon? Reaching that goal can be done a lot of ways. Like politics. Huh? You're not wrong, but... That was just an example, geez. But I admit, being an entertainer is probably the fastest way to win people over. But that's not what you want to do, is it? My heart trembles for the opera. That is why I wish to pursue it, as long as I'm able. However, I believe it is also time for me to consider expanding my horizons. Oh? I simply do not wish to be trapped in my own fear forever. Although I do regret that my one-track-minded efforts may have been in vain. I don't think everything you've done so far is in vain, though. I always believe in sincere efforts. But never mind that. What are you going to do now? I'm not sure. I already rejected Mr. Lucas's offer. Lucas? He's an influencer who's been coming here recently. Why does that name ring a bell? Oh, wait! You know him? Oh, wait. We know him. And I haven't been checking our phone. So we've got our stories. Riona. No night shift. Liked by Lucas. Myrtle. We had a break in the office and just played board games for hours. It was fun. Aqua, go Aqua, look what Myrtle did. Sneakily taking my super serious gaming face while playing Super Brawl Pals 2. <laughs> I love them. Super busy, see you tomorrow. I like Lucas. We got good friends in this game. I like these people. Not closely, but I think we follow each other on Tomachill. If it's even the same Lucas. What was the offer for? I was offered a spot on his new show. While he's still unsure of the format, his aim is to elevate underrated talents, to showcase and interview them in order to bring their work to the forefront. I see. So what if you rejected his offer? Call him! Huh? Or text him! Tell him you changed your mind. What's the worst that could happen? People are allowed to change their minds. If he rejects you, well, that's his loss, isn't it? I'm not sure it'd be his loss necessarily. Shh. shh. Just do it. Text him. Yeah. Okay. I hope he shows up. He could just show. I literally already played this, but I don't remember what he does. He responded. What did he say? He's happy I changed my mind. And he's going to text me later to talk more about it. It seems like he's in the middle of something. At least that's one thing settled. Yep. Yes, thank you. Although I regret my one-track mindset, I cannot say it has been entirely detrimental to my life, as it is a habit formed during my le- As it is a habit formed during my time living in the commune. Commune? We banshees used to congregate together in order to protect ourselves from the outside world. Each of us tended to have a specific role in the commune, and we all would work together as one, like years in a machine. Interesting. I didn't know that. But you left the commune, didn't- but you left the commune, correct? Yes. Was it difficult? No, because we're not a cult. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's okay. The commune is simply a defense mechanism from the distant past. So the reason we do not see a lot of banshees around is because many still choose to remain in the commune? Right. The world still isn't kind to us. However, we are aware that eventually we must reopen ourselves to the outside world. It was for that reason I learned to drive. You seem to be fond of driving. I am. It's like having a mobile fortress. Which is why I find driving calming. Even in traffic? Well, a mobile fortress, huh? Never thought of cars that way, but that's interesting. Perhaps it's better if I go now. Okay, I'll leave too. If you wish, I can drop you off. Really? I live pretty far from here. It's fine. Okay, see you later, Shelby. Safe trip, miss. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. See you soon. Okay. I suppose I'll wait another hour. Oh, and then we didn't. <laughs> and then no one else came. So this, I think, is the day of the wedding. And then I think there's one more day after this. Gobbly Labs shut down researcher to finally stop experiments after 1,304 incidents. Users of Tomada Chill, I don't remember how to say that, news stories feature, 
it needs a longer duration. A piece of happling advice that seared into my memory. This is so dark. Why are the lights off? Gala, so I drove him around while he was nursing his broken heart. Hide, I don't really know why we're discussing my sad stories right now. Eyes on the happy couple. Is this a surprise? They know that we're doing this, right? Oh, it wasn't so sad as it much cute, though. But it's true that you and Mr. Bailey should be in the spotlight, Miss Lua. Or just in the light. Sorry, I'm trying to get this switch. Ow! Whoops, my apologies, Mr. Gala. You're literally solid like a wall. I'll take that as a compliment. Here we go. I forgot I was also at the wedding. <laughs> you all found your way to a seat. I'm impressed. We've been here often enough that we know the place like the back of our hand. That's what it means to have regulars, Shelby. So it does. Now, shall we get this celebration started? Please, I'm excited. That's adrenaline for you. Hang on to that feeling. You call it adrenaline. I call it deep, passionate, irresistible fascination for her husband. Hey, hey, hey. Don't get too cocky, Mr. Miller. Oh, are you taking Lua's last name, Bailey's? Ha, <laughs> no. We're keeping our last names. But I'll be Mr. Miller if it pleases Mrs. Miller. Anything to make you happy. Aw, oh, you always make me melt. Disgusting. <laughs> he said, wiping off his tears. How many times must I tell you? It was the City Hall flowers. They make my allergies flare up. Sure, let's go with that. This would be the perfect time for some drinks. I wouldn't say no to something hot for sure. And to something sweet. To something decadent and chocolatey. But let's keep it fresh. There's enough sweetness here to give me a sugar rush. So, hmm, in summary... Am I gonna have to remember all four? Sweet and chocolatey, but with some freshness to it. Or is everybody getting the same thing? Sweet and chocolatey. With some freshness to it. And sweet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mint honey chocolate. Ooh, that looks nice. Oh my gosh. Is everybody getting... Oh, okay. Here you go. I hope you enjoy this. Hmm. Well... Can, can, oh, oh, can't get it right every time. What do you mean? This was up to me to make. Oh no, is it completely off? It's gonna be just fine. Yes, what you make always tastes great anyway, Shelby. But they didn't even ask for anything specific. What do you mean? I guess we should raise a toast. Does anyone want to make a speech? Someone? Shelby, maybe? No, you just insulted my drink. I will not. Uh, I don't think I'm the right person to give speeches. You definitely are. Yes, if you want to, we'd love to hear you. In that case... Thank you for choosing to come to this cafe, Miss Lua, Mr. Bailey's, and thank you for making us feel a true part of your lives. Here, here. You'll always be part of our lives now, Shelby. Absolutely. Short and to the point. Good speech. Your turn, Hyde. Really? Uh, well, fine. Thank you, Lua and Bailey's, for entertaining me and making me consider a counseling clear, however briefly. You're a good bunch. That means a lot, Hyde. You've been a very good friend to us. Don't think we're forgetting about you, Gala. Speech time. Right. I don't know you as well as Shelby, guys. And I haven't helped you nearly as much as I did. But despite that, you've made me feel welcome. You've immediately made me feel part of your family. May this warmth that you show others always reflect as joy in the family you're starting today. Aw, Gala. Thanks, man, really. To the happy couple. To the happy couple! Are your allergies troubling you again, Mr. Hyde? Shelby, my dear Shelby, never think that you're out of reach of my retribution. Is he flirting? Was that flirting? <laughs> I do apologize that we only serve soft drinks here. Some bubbles would have befitted the occasion. Oh, we don't serve. We don't serve. Soft serve. Soft drinks. Soft serve. Ice cream? Don't worry about it. As far as I'm concerned, it suits me just fine. Yeah, we're not really drinking booze these days. Oh? Speaking of starting a family, just in case, you know. Oh. And I'm avoiding it in solidarity. That's nice, you guys. I'm rooting for you. Thanks, Gala. Just imagine. Little purple elves with horns running around everywhere. 
And thanks, I think. Hide. I aim to please. Personally, I'm fine with soft drinks as well. Never liked the stronger stuff. Oh, that's what I was saying. We only have soda, we don't have alcohol. Oop, I didn't notice. I didn't even realize. He's not lying. I never saw him touch it. Is there any specific reason why not? I just don't like the taste. Never got used to it. Never particularly tried to. People assume I like to drink, especially because I'm a big burly dude, I guess. But nope. Assumptions like that are annoying to me. I like that you look at it just as a taste among others. Sometimes I want to taste wine and sometimes I just want tomato juice. Definitely, booze just became this big social thing. But I, for one, wish there was a better range of soft drinks. I went to a very expensive... I went to a very expensive restaurant a while ago. They had a soft drink pairing option. They imported some alcohol-free vermouth, homemade some fruit juice. It all tasted really nice and unique. But then they also had edible robots and they made a miniature forest out of vegetables and dark chocolate. Wow, when did you go to a place like that? A while ago with my family, back when we were still in touch. Bay, I'm okay, sweetie. Well, I make a mean cocktail. There's a hard version and a soft version, and in the hard version, I use vodka. In the soft version, I don't use vodka. Fair enough. What else goes into it? A little bit of basil, some lemon juice, a pinch of salt, tonic water. That sounds like something I would enjoy. Wait for it. And of course, a big dollop of fresh blood. Here it comes. O-type preferably, universal donors, and all that. Yuck. I think this is a joke. I hope this is a joke. And this is why he never gets invited to parties. What do you mean? I'm invited to all the parties. Thank you so much for being with us, the three of you. Thank you for having us. It was fun to meet your friends from work, Baileys. And your sister, Lua. And your sister, Lua. <laughs> not your sister. Your s Lua's not your sister. She's got a very strong character. I respect that. She's impossible, you mean. But I love her to bits. Yeah, she took a while to warm up to me. Oh, just a year or three. She probably wanted to make sure you were right for her baby sister. Yes, that was definitely the reason why. She thinks of me as some sort of softy that needs protection. Well, I mean, compared to her, Gala is a softy. I'd say Gala is a softy compared to many people. Fair enough. But yes, I think she could take him when he's uh, when he's under fury. If Shelby ever moves out and I'm out of the, my special tea, I can ask for your sister's number, I guess. You would have to hurry, or you'll have to step over... Hmm. Your primary school friend, Baileys? Marco? I thought I'd caught him staring at her. I bet they didn't leave it at staring. The two witnesses. Delightfully cliche, isn't it? You seem to be enjoying the gossip very much, Mr. Hyde. Of course I do. That's how I take my best pictures. Long glances. Touches filled with pent-up desire. Scorn dissimulated in a smirk. Hopefully you've captured some pictures of our lovebirds, too. Ah, yes, I really can't wait to see them. Well, that's the downside of film. I know, I know. But it'll be worth it, so I'm happy to be patient. Good girl. In that case, I have a reward for you. Don't be like that. A <laughs> perfect shot! Oh, look at this, Bay. This is amazing. What a beautifully captured moment, Mr. Hyde. Yes, truly. Thank you again for doing this, Mr. Hyde. Don't mention it. I had an all right time doing it. You can keep this if you want. It's just a Polaroid. But... Oh, no, it's absolutely lovely. It looks so friendly and warm. Like the wedding we always really wanted to have. Yes, once we sifted through the superfluous details. I love that you guys figured out that in the end. And I love this picture. Do you only have one, Mr. Hyde? Why, Shelby? You want to frame it and hang it on your wall? Actually, yes. Something like that. Good thing I saw it coming. If our newlyweds don't object, I have almost the exact same one over here for you. No objections whatsoever. Yeah, I'd love that. It would mean a lot to have a little memory of this day hanging around here. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Yes, Shelby, I'm not sure where we'd be without you. Ahem. So I take it you have decided to embrace photography, Mr. Hyde. It would seem so. Ah, oh, come on, tell them. Tell us what? Nothing's been confirmed yet. They're certainly not going back on it, and you aren't either, right? Of course not. Well, then... Just tell them the story. It's obvious you are dying to. Don't have to ask me twice. Hyde has already agreed to shoot another wedding. They're a really sweet couple who's been visiting their kid at the hospital. Little Rose has been sick for a while. 
Doctors think she's going to get better eventually, but no one knows exactly when. So her parents have decided to get married in her room with her around. That's a lovely idea. I bet little Rose is thrilled. She is, an entire party next to her bed, can you imagine? Anyhow, they got to chatting with Hyde. And just like that, he promised to take their pictures pro bono. That's very good of you, Mr. Hyde. It's nothing, I could use the experience. So that I can milk my wedding, so that I can milk my modeling ex-colleagues uh, for their wedding pictures. Sounds like a good social redistribution system to me. Right? So does that mean you're sticking around Seattle for good, Hyde? I've got the house and I've got the job and I've got my own pocket werewolf. So sounds like I'll be staying here a little while. That's great to hear. How's the house coming along? Taking ages, but it'll look good when it's finished. I'm having it redone from scratch, so it's a process. But as a vampire, my needs are a little particular. Fair enough. I think it's normal to be particular when it comes to your dream home, you know? What would a dream house look like for the two of you? Hmm, we're not too sure yet. But we're not repeating the same mistakes. No endless Tomodachil scrolling to look at other people's homes. And no overspending or feeling inadequate on my side. My love. It's alright, I'm glad we talked it all through. Lua made me realize that it's fine if I don't earn as much as she does. And if my family doesn't contribute anything. In fact, Lua's mom told the same during the wedding. I didn't know you talked about it. Don't worry, it went really well. She said that what mattered to her is that I make her daughter happy. Which is good, because that's what matters to me too. And a happy Lua is a Lua who powers through her job. Yeah, I really can't consider slowing down my career. Well, maybe a little. And when the time comes, when the time comes, the thing is I don't mind slowing down my career. I've always been the one bringing up the kids topic. It's not that I don't want them, but I was afraid what I'd do to my, what it'd do to my work. That makes sense. Women are always expected to do more when it comes to child rearing. Well, not in our couple. We've decided that when we have kids, I'll be the stay at home dad. I'll still do some freelance work if and when I have time. Not so much for the money as to keep my brain working. And I'll be taking care of the little ones and of our place. You know, I keep thinking how happy I am that I met you and married you. Not many men would have wanted that. You'd be surprised. Times are changing and so on. Times are making more room for people to follow their wishes. I've known many men who would rather stay home with their children than go to work every day and almost never see them. You two just compliment each other well. I think so too. Mr. Miller, Mrs. Uh, no, using my family name on you feels wrong. They would throw a fit if they heard you do that. They absolutely would. It's almost tempting, but none of that matters much anyway. As long as we're still Lua and Bailey's. As long as we're still Lua and Bailey's. Alright. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Where is he going? It sounds like Hyde has found a new way forward. He has, yeah. I'm really happy about that. When I first met him, I thought he was a bit mysterious. And honestly, a bit of a jerk. But he's really quite fragile, isn't he? There's nothing more solid and more fragile than an immortal. I'm speaking like I know. What are we? I still don't know what we are. Yeah, nothing screws with your head quite as much as having unlimited time. Even elves with their only longish lives have issues. I can imagine. Werewolves are somewhere between elves and humans. And we also struggle with that stuff. I guess the bottom line is everyone gets bored and confused once in a while, right? And the longer you live, the more once in a whiles you get. That makes sense to me. I will say, though, it, I'm mighty happy that he's sticking around. For all that he can be a difficult one, he also makes life a lot more interesting. And we just really get each other after all this time. You two know what I mean. Yes, we really do. At this point, even when we need to take a bit of time out, we can trust that we'll always find our way back to each other. That's right. You know, he's got a way of finding good people. Hyde, I mean. He liked Shelby from the start. Not that I've ever disagreed, but he just really got you right away. He has been very kind to me. And perceptive about me as well. He, Because he knows something. He knows something about me. And Hyde is the only one that I really want to flirt with at this point. But I'm not sure if there's something going on between him and Gala. A little bit, but I'm not sure. Um, And I'm glad he befriended you too. This chat right now, it's really good. You're all right too, Gala. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing more of you. Right back at ya. Listen to that, it's pouring rain again. It'd be really cold if I didn't have your jacket, Bay. But are you okay? Yeah, don't worry about me. I always worry about you. And I guess that's kind of my job now. Only if I get to worry about you too. 
You guys are cute. I'm with Hyde and saying, disgusting. But you know what's even better than worrying about each other? Not worrying about each other. Point taken. Rainy weddings are meant to be good luck anyway. I've always wondered where that came from. It sounds like lip service for the happy couple. To avoid a meltdown if it rains. Which must happen often enough. Really? So you don't know? Don't know what? Oh, maybe it's just a thing among elves. Have you heard of it, Shelby? Are you referring to the goddess's tears legend? That's the one. Never heard of that. It's actually a whole epic medieval elven poetry, but I can give you the short version. Go on, I'm very curious. All right then. A long time ago lived a powerful goddess. That goddess had many children, but all of, of all of her children, one she liked best. They were the shyest and the quietest. When their siblings screamed for attention, they sat aside and played with the clouds. When their siblings tormented each other, they silently looked at the stars. When their siblings ran away from the rain, they waited and watched the rain fall. The goddess thought, even if all my children desert me, this one will always be by my side. They are kind and gentle. They will love me and take care of me. She thought of the days ahead and smiled. But one day, as the young godling sat on the edge of a cloud, pondering the world, a gust of wind blew on them and they lost their balance. Oh no! Don't worry, it's not a sad story. All right then. Carried by the wind, they floated down to the ground, and immediately they were astonished. There were so many things around them that they'd never seen before. They were both delighted and lost, and they stood rooted in place for many human eras, until a human found them there. Shall we call the godling Aeon and the human Ray, just for clarity? That's going to help me for sure. I get lost without names. All right, Aeon and Ray it is. Ray walked up to Aeon, finding them stunned and guided them forward. They took, their, they took them to their village and showed them how they lived their life. As the days passed, Aeon started talking to Ray. They discussed stars and planets, clouds and suns. They talked of harvest and of young children, of famines and old men. They talked of time and of eternity. And as they looked into each other's eyes, they found both the briefest of moments and the longest era in there. That's how they both knew they were in love. They decided to get married, but both of them wanted to, wanted the assent of their family. Ray got it without any trouble. Their family were quite, quite fond of Aeon by then. But when Aeon went to see their mother, the goddess, that old hag, give her a chance, my love, she improves. But yeah, at first she wasn't thrilled. In fact, she was outraged that her favorite child should be taken away from her. That reminds me of someone. I promise you, she's a lot better than my mother. Anyway, she's got really angry and she told Aeon, get married if you wish, but if you do get married, then you shall wither and die, just like your fiancé. Yuck. And to nobody's surprise at this point, Aeon said, I'm alright with that. What's eternity if I can't have my Ray by my side? Down to get married they went. For many hours the goddess was angry and shouted. Then for many more hours she was despondent and sulked. Then finally she turned an eye onto the ground to look up at Aeon and Ray. They were in the field where Ray had first found Aeon. They wore garlands of flowers and they were surrounded with people they loved. And for the first time, Aeon wasn't quiet at all. They were singing and dancing, their eyes sparkling, their hair floating on the wind. And the goddess saw that for the first time in an eternity, their child was happy. She regretted her bitter words then. But a goddess's word once spoken isn't easily broken. In sadness for her child's child's mortal days she started crying and one by one her tears hit the earth in a thick cloud of rain but instead of running from it Aeon and Ray danced with it and so the goddess said for each tear of mine that falls onto you may you live another year and even as your hair turns gray and your skin turns parched may that year see you both dancing and singing still in love with each other and according to elves that's how we came to be but I think that's a bit far-fetched. My love, are you tearing up? It's nothing. You're just really beautiful sometimes. You're born a legend teller, Mr. Baileys. That was an astonishing rendition of that story. Yeah, that was epic. And not gonna look at the rain, and I'm not gonna look at the rain the same way now. Uh, it's just a silly legend. It's not silly at all. And you're right, the goddess is a lot better than your mother. Told you. My history with rain is a lot simpler. I just really love it when it rains outside and you're all warm indoors. 
Yeah, that's a very cozy feeling. My bedroom when I was a little girl was on the top floor. So I could hear the rainfall at night when I was in my bed. It was great. I wish we lived in a world where everyone had that. A place to be safe while the rain falls outside. For sure. Where did Hyde go? <gasps> oh, look! Here's at least another someone who's safe from the rain right now. Oof, that's a very wet little guy. Poor Gala, did he just shake rain all over you? He did a little, but that's fine. He's a cute one. What's he doing here, though? Is he your cat, Shelby? Um, no, but he's been around a couple of times. I do remember seeing him a week or so ago. He's not friendlier than he was then. Although he's not especially aggressive either. Maybe he's adopting to this place. Wouldn't be the first. That's pretty much how you got Hyde, too. He's just standing there staring, too. Now that's an apt comparison. It seems that he might be looking for something, though. Or someone? If that's the case, he hasn't found them yet. He came, out, he came by another time a few days ago and was actually quite helpful, but he didn't look settled then either. And there he goes. Very mysterious. Who is that? Who is the cat? Also, when is chapter three coming out? Are we gonna find out more about this cat because... Oh, what did I miss? A cat, apparently. Ah, oh, yes, I saw it go. What was that about? We're not entirely sure. He has come by a handful of times, but he doesn't seem to stay very long or ask for anything. I was saying that he might be looking for someone. Perhaps he is. In many traditions, cats are depicted as having special foresight. Messengers between worlds, so to speak. He may know something that we don't, or see something we can't see. That's just what they want you to believe. Looking mysterious to get food and cuddles. I was saying that it reminds me of someone, actually. No comment. Anyhow, what was that last... What was that call about? That was the interior designer about the house. For some reason, he needed to know the exact size of my turntable, as well as whether I wanted walnut or oak floors. I just want floors I can walk on. That's surprising. I thought you'd have... You, I thought you would be more particular about decoration, Hyde. I am particular in the sense that I want it to look good. But he's got no clue what to do to, uh, to get there. I mean, you've seen his car. It's not, you know, peak design trends. That car served me right, thank you very much. I remember when a certain werewolf didn't want to drive me around. I shouldn't have brought that up. Truce. Why don't you help Hyde with decorating then, Gala? Why indeed? Uh, my job, time. Your job, time? I see. Everyone's a critic, but the truth is, Gala has no understanding of color, material, or shape. I'm a lazy interior designer at best. But Gala is an interior designer's waking nightmare. Not true, I just go for functional things. That's what people say when they've got no taste. Yeah, maybe my taste in vampires is the problem here. Are they flirting? Are they flirting? I think your taste in vampires is your one saving grace. Is this flirting? I can't tell. I can't tell if this is flirting. I just really want Hyde to be flirting with me. You guys sound like you're gonna be just fine. Indeed. You know, being like this all together when it's dark and damp and feeling good and safe and home, it's a pretty rare feeling in a kind of public place. I think the kinda is key here. As far as I can remember, this has never felt like a strange space to me. It's my space that I'm lucky enough to share with other people I like. I definitely feel the same way. Thanks for that, Shelby. I'm glad that's how it feels to you. Our patrons' comfort has always been our priority. Goal very much achieved, then. That, and also you are all right. It sounds like everyone's gonna be busy with their own stuff for a while, but I can't wait to come back here and see our, all your faces again. Whether in a week, a month, or a year. I know it's gonna be a good time. Cheers to that. Here, here. You're all welcome anytime, separately or together. And I'm looking forward to hearing about what you get up to. We'll definitely pop by to give you news. And get fury remedies. And to listen in on the drama. We can't wait to welcome you back. We. I say we. What's that about? I think the rain is over. And we've kept you up for a while already, Shelby. Yeah, we should all use the dry spell to get back home. Consider the night called. You go first, guys, or we'll be stepping on each other's toes. All right. Good night, Shelby. Good night. Good night, you two. Let's go, darling. Let's. Good night, Shelby. Thanks again for being with us. Tonight and on other nights. No thank you for everything, truly. Have a good rest, Shelby. Will do. I wanted to adopt the cat. I had hoped we would get to adopt the cat. 
You guys coming? Yeah, just hold the door for me a second longer. What are you doing? I'm carrying you over the threshold, of course. That's on the way into the home, not on the way out of the bar. I can do both. You're silly. Maybe, but I love you. I love you too. Bustling, busy, and a buzz. People whose thoughts I can almost hear as well as my own by now. Whose success and failures matter to me as much as my own. I suppose that's what it feels like to have a chosen hive. What am I? What am I? What are you? I think this is the last day? I think this is the last day. The last episode ended abruptly because I ended up not continuing to play that stream and then I just forgot to save the VOD. Heir of American business royalty disowned over choice of wife. Oh, they're talking about Baileys. Killer algae, the new invasive species? Fire director resigns in the wake of shocking leaks. I love the drama of the backstory of whatever's going on in the news all the time. Somehow this feels like deja vu. What does that mean? Hey, welcome Officer Georgie. What's cracking? Aside from the thunder outside, that is. Yep, deja vu. What? Nothing, everything is fine. I have everything I need to avoid another blackout. That's good news. You know, this weather has kind of grown on me. Really? Yeah, not something I'd like to have forever, of course. But the thunder no longer sounds so angry to me. Interesting, what does it sound like to you? Hmm, no idea. Just not scary anymore. Anyway, I want to order something. Perfect, what would you like? Make me whatever I ordered a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago? Yeah, give or take. You were promoting a new tea selection at the time. Good times. I remember I had an interesting color. I'll take whatever you gave me that day. What the heck is, what the heck was that? What the heck was that? What, what, what? It's been like a month. He said it was a new tea. So I'll just give him... Are none of these the new tea? Where are the new teas? So this is the blue pea stuff and this is the hibiscus. I think let's give him... Um, I don't know. Let's give him this one. Hibiscus, ginger, and honey. Uh, he, he, these people need to get specific <laughs> or, or else they can't complain. Here you go, officer. Not really what I ordered, I think. Well, you couldn't remember what you wanted. So it's not my fault. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll take it anyway. As long as it doesn't have milk in it. I see. All right. I'm sorry once again. You all right? I feel like I've been making so many mistakes lately. I wonder why. Do you ever take a break? I got all of the drinks wrong, apparently. I don't know how I'm supposed to know unless I cheat, but what happens if I get all the drinks right? Also, why do they feel like there's deja vu going on? What's happening? When was the last time you closed up shop? I don't remember. You should take a break. Really, close up shop when you can. Take a week off or something. I'll consider it. How are you, officer? How's work? Work, huh? Well, it's only been a couple of days since I was here. But I admit, a lot has happened. Oh? Yeah, for starters, word has spread that parking on Bourne Street is no longer safe. Because of the vandalism? Yeah. And I really don't want it to escalate, you know? I don't want the story of the street rewritten to something bad. Makes sense. So what did you do? Uh, what makes you think I did anything? Just a guess. Well, you're not wrong. The day after our last talk, I paid the old gnomes a visit and had a chat with them. What did you talk about? We talked about what could happen to them and the area due to the vandalism they committed. They were remorseful to the point. To a point. Because they're upset about what happened to the remains of their friend. Right. All they wanted was to create something memorable that would stay in everyone's mind. In one way or another. Even in a bad way. That's what I thought they were going for too. Turns out that's not the case. They just wanted to create something memorable. Something that gets everyone talking. But when I gave them a hypothetical scenario with rumors getting out of control and how folks will spin the whole thing into something else, they were a bit stunned, honestly. Is it because they didn't think of the consequences that far ahead? That's right. I told them it could potentially lead to the street being closed because it would be deemed unsafe or maybe even rebuilt into something completely different, which would effectively erase all trace left of their friend. So they decided to stop right there right then. Interesting. But, you know, I get their need to keep the memory alive. Even if what they did was a bit misguided, I understood. Still, what they did was not the way to go about it. And honestly, I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the all of this. 
all this memory stuff shows that I and the world probably need to learn a lot more about fairy folk in general. I agree. So what did you do next? Did you arrest them? No. All I did that day was chat with them. Because I wanted a clearer picture on everything, including the old fairy market and all. I also shared the story about my grandpa. In the end, they said whatever I decided to do, they'll accept. So I went home. I see. You know, my daughter asked about what happened. Now, since she gave me good advice on the case and everything, I told her the whole story. About the street, about the tree. Wow, that's really everything. Anyhow, after our talk, I guess she started looking into the fairy folk's history. And in one of those videos she did, I have no clue what to call them. They're videos of herself packing orders while talking about stuff. I reposted on my Toma Tomada chill a couple of days ago. Oh, I haven't been checking. Whoops. She basically talked to her viewers about what she learned in the video. About your case? No, no. Only things that she learned on her own. Got it. That's great, though. You never know. Maybe through her video, curiosity will spread. Get everyone wondering about this piece of disappearing history. You're right. Oh. Who knows what the future holds? Hello? Hey! Lucas is in the house! Hey! What's up, what's up? And you, Pops, how goes it? All good. You're in high spirits, aren't you? Always. Anyways, Pops, what's shaking? I think I should be the one asking you that. What's with all the excess energy? You're right, I probably should explain. But first... Dear Shelby, may I put in an order? You may. I'd like a blue pea latte with super cool latte art. I knew our boy Lucas would ask for that. I knew he would want the art that I have. Blue... P latte. What does that mean? Blue pea milk milk to make it a latte? Gotta hope that's right. That's how you make a latte, I think. Latte art. Okay, let's try and... Uh, I don't really remember. We've gotta go, like, kinda heavy-handed over here. I think, and then you kinda... All right, and then we etch, and we're going to do whoop, one more. Slower. One more. I think that's nice. Now, what if I do, like, a dot? A few dots. Beautiful. Work of art. He'll appreciate it cup of blue latte with a masterpiece on it. A masterpiece, eh? I like your confidence. Enough to put it on Instagram. He's taking a picture. Anyway, cheers. Hold on, I gotta check. Oh. Oh, there's silver. Okay, he didn't post it yet. I'll check later. I'll, I'll make sure he does. Thanks, Shelby. So what's up, kid? All's well, Pops. I'm waiting for the lady to arrive. Oh, so Miss Riona's coming. Yep, she should be here soon. The last couple of days have been really intense for us. In fact, I didn't sleep at all last night. Oh, why? Let's just say we've been busy cooking up stuff. What? What is it? I know you're a hustler, kid. Your schedule is probably not like everyone else's. But I hope you won't drag others into unhealthy habits unnecessarily. Although I know next to nothing about Banshee biology. Doesn't she do late night deliveries? Oh, sometimes she does deliveries until morning. Eh, then never mind, kid. Forget everything I said. Phew! I was like, old man, what stupid thing did I do this time? Old man, old man, old man. Nah, I was just pulling your leg. We're both, you're both adults. I was just playing around as the nosy and annoying old guy. Still, it's good that you guys are talking. Especially considering what happened the last, the first time you met. Yeah, no kidding. That's what I mean by doing stupid things, too. Sometimes I don't slow down enough to see the forest for the trees, you know? It happens. As long as you're aware of it and take a step back from time to time. Yep. Welcome, Miss Riona. Hello. Lady. Lady! Finally, you're here. Good evening, miss. Hi, everyone. Was the traffic bad for you? No, not at all. I had to deliver something before I came. That's why I'm a bit late. I apologize. No, you're not late. I'm just early. Would you like anything to drink? Yes, please. I'd like a cup of mild coffee, sweetened with a little bit of honey. I'm, what does mild coffee mean? Is that mild? 
She didn't ask for anything else in it, and I feel like the honey makes it mild. It's only two coffees. It's not like the espresso. That's three coffees. Sweet coffee? God, I hope that's... I'm going to get all of this wrong, and she's going to be like, uh... Is something the matter? Yes, I don't think this is what I... I'm sorry, I keep messing up the drinks. I didn't think it was that important. You're right, I'm truly sorry. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Still, I apologize. What's mild coffee mean? What's that mean? So, what's really been happening with you two? This kid stayed up for days or something, apparently. Does that include you as well? Yes, but those are just my regular working hours. See? See? And I thought we were done talking about that, Pops. What the heck? I'm not done playing the role of annoying and nosy old guy, that's all. Jeez. Anyway, the truth is, me and the lady have been discussing the show's format. Oh, how goes it so far? We're almost there, right? I think, yes. We've been discussing it quite intensely in the past couple of days. We're at the point where things are beginning to take shape. But it's just not quite there yet. But almost. That's why we've been staying up late, organizing all these ideas into a deck. We're making a new show proposal to pitch to my team. Are you two going to work together then? In a way, yes. It is my intention to act as Lucas's guide to the city. I'm going to have him drive too sometimes. Yeah, I don't want her to always drive me around. But I might need some time to get used to driving again. Of course. My suggestion would be for us to drive across the Evergreen Point Bridge. On days when there's less traffic when the sun is out. It'll make you feel good, I'm sure of it. Okay, let's do it. Anyway, so that's what's been happening. Meanwhile, I've been helping her find auditions. I wasn't aware there were many ways to find audition leads online. You still have to vet them, though, because there are so many fakes out there. But I'll help you with that, don't worry. Okay. Well, sounds good, y'all. I wish the best of luck. Thank you. It said complete their normal story arc. What's normal mean? And what? how do I make it not normal and be romantic or something? I don't know. I might have to leave soon. Well, why? I haven't eaten anything substantial since this morning. It was a really busy day. Oh, word? Let's go then. Oh, you can stay. I'll just go for a quick bite and come back. No, let's go. We're partners, right? Besides, we still have a lot of things to discuss. You're right. Okay, if you're fine with it. I think it's time for us to go. I mean, for me. Roger that. Let's get going. See you later, Pops. Good luck with everything. You too, you too. Bye, Shelby. See you again soon. Goodbye. I know there's other storylines and different, like, kind of endings and stuff that you can find um, in this game, so you might want to play this yourself, because I'm definitely only going to do the one. Just you and me now. Nothing wrong with that. I have to go soon, though. Duty calls. Sure. Hello! How are you? Freya! Hey, Miss Greenhair. Hey, officer. Long time no see. I heard you both going around the world, huh? You've been going around the world. Around the world is a bit much, but I've been somewhere. I'm glad to see you here, Freya. Well, as much as I'd like to stay in chat, duty calls. Aw, oh, that sucks. I missed you. Well, I'll see you later then, Georgie. Yeah, don't forget to tell Shelby the truth, okay? Later, Shelby. I will. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Let's move over here. So, my buddy, my pal, my good friend. Shelby, what's up? Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Before you start blaming me, it was a last minute thing. Even I didn't know I'll be back so soon. So it makes you return sooner than expected. Well, maybe I'll tell you after a drink. Hey, do you remember my very first order ever? Espresso? Yep, you have a good memory. The first time I was here, it was raining as hard as it is now. I thought nothing was open anymore until I saw your shop. Your espresso was one of the best coffees I've ever had. Thank you. One espresso for me, please. Good, because I cannot screw that up. <laughs> I have screwed up too many drinks, and I don't know which endings I'm not going to get now. Here you go, Freya. A cup of a triple shot espresso for you. Great. Again, this deep aroma and such stellar flavors. Thanks. So, mind telling me why Officer Georgie said what he said? Which part? Something about telling me the truth? Uh, well, about that. Okay. I'm leaving for a writer's residence soon, and it's really, really far away. What? I know, I know. It was impulsive, and it was something I did on a whim. I know. Me and my old buddy sent the application for him, like, last month, not really expecting anything. But we got accepted, and somehow it's for this year's rotation. Which means I need to pack and get ready really soon. It's not a scam, is it? Of course not. How long is it going to be? I don't know. Probably a few months. 
but I might try to keep traveling after that. Okay. Shelby, are you sad? No. Don't be sad while I'm gone, okay? I said I'm not sad. Aw, anyway, tell me what's been happening all this time I've been gone. There should be a lot of juicy stories waiting for me, right? Oh, you have no idea. Spill it, everything. All right, so it started around two weeks ago. I'm so glad she came back. We did it. Aqua's working on her game while Myrtle helps from time to time. They're a good team. Silver and Amanda's trip took them quite a bit further than they expected. Where are they? They look like they're in space. And Pearl appears in a number of their selfies from London City. <laughs> I went too fast. Hyde's reputation as a dreamy, sensitive wedding photographer spread all around Seattle. And Gala is fond of qualifying him in those exact terms to Hyde's obvious displeasure and secret joy. Cute. Lewin Bailey's bought a little house with large windows and small garden and an extra bedroom. Bailey's has been using it as a workspace, but it stands ready to fulfill a whole other function. Babies. They mean babies. The Nekochel X Remy collaboration was a success, and a new single was released on time. No! I clicked by accident. Riona and Lucas often come to the coffee shop after his driving lessons to discuss the ver a variety of topics. Looks like they're taking it slow and planning things carefully as they match up their working schedules. Fortunately, the vandalism ended before the rumors could worsen. Sometimes a lone officer can be seen placing flowers where the dead tree once stood. Can't they vote to like erect a statue there or something? They should put a statue there or something. That's it. That's the whole... Wait. Did I know about this? Did I know about this? Miss Riona, hello again. I dropped something here a long time ago. So I'm here to get it. Oh, what item was it? It's fine, I've got it. It was right under the seat. Really? I always make sure to check everything before closing, too. There are times when we simply miss things. Particularly if it is a task that we have performed numerous times. That's true. I guess it's a sign for me to double check everything. It may or may not be. I have a feeling you'll find something of interest either way. There is even the possibility of gaining complete understanding of everything. Or everyone. Pardon? I didn't quite catch that. Have a good evening, Shelby. Oh, okay. Have a safe trip, Miss Riona. That was ominous. I think that's to tell me that I can replay the game and there are things that I missed. And there were many things I did wrong. Looks like no one else will be coming tonight. Might as well go check on... What was that? That sounded like it came from inside the drawer. What the? The missing items, they're here. But they vanished a while ago. Now what is really going on? What? You have now seen part of the image, but there are still many details to discover. Oh, they gave me all the items back. I think that I was supposed to give to people or something like that. I think that's what that's about. But that's the end of the chapter two, Coffee Talk two. Um, we don't have a chapter three yet, but, um, thank you for waiting for this part. Um, it was sad that I couldn't get the actual VOD off of Twitch, but I was happy to replay it for you. And I'll see you in the next VOD. Goodbye!